Hey guys, Toby with Vigilante Performance, and this video is on the Ford Racing Z304 DA heads. So it's their newest version or newer version. So let's go through some of the pros and cons on the cylinder head. I've actually taken the time to flow test them and compare them to another similar cylinder head. So we'll see how it does. Now, it's uh, let's look at the pros. It's a uh, great looking casting, to be honest. There's a lot of guys that go to car shows and they just they don't care about the horsepower. They just want to, you know, pop that hood and have a beer and see how good their engine looks. So for guys like that, like I said, I think it's a it's a great looking casting. Ford Racing on the side. So great looking casting. It does have beehive springs, obviously beehive retainers, which make it much, much lighter. And actually, I prefer using beehive springs on a lot of street applications. Actually, I wish AFR offered a, a beehive option if you actually take the time to look at our vigilante performance instagram page you'll see a lot of uh, cylinder heads that we do or engines and some of them use a beehive spring so that's definitely a plus on this cylinder head the valves definitely a quality valve 16202 on the intake so definitely a good looking valve and uh, they obviously use an ARP stud, a 7 16 ARP rocker stud. So those are the pros. And that's, that's just about where it ends for me. Um, let's look at the cons, at least what I think would keep me from buying the cylinder head. Okay. First of all, it does have a raised, much higher, you know, raised exhaust port, which means you will have to use specialty headers. I mean, you might be able to make them work and uh, modify the flange, but uh, that's you know depends on the, the make and model. So that's that's one issue for a lot of people. But because of the raised exhaust port, at the same time, it could help with exhaust flow. Okay. The other thing, like I said, it they do look like quality valves. At the same time, it's an eleven thirty second valve. I mean. AFR and TFS have been using 8mm for a while now. I, I don't understand why they would run an 11 32nd valve when you consider the fact that it's got to be about, uh, I believe, about 20 grams heavier than a similar 8mm valve. Not only that, when you guys are buying production valves, it's going to cost the same. So whether it's an 11 32nd or an 8mm, you spec out that valve, it's going to run about the same amount of money but you're going to get a much lighter valve train. So that's a big con for me. I still don't see why in 2024 they're selling a cylinder head with 11 32nd valve, but that's just me. Okay, so the intake port. Okay, so it's got a, a generous 200cc intake port, which is good and bad, and we'll get into that later. So it's got a pretty decent uh, size but that, that can obviously hurt it if it's not designed right. So I'll get into that a bit later, okay? The other thing, can we actually check that out right here? Let's see, right here. So you can tell right here, I've got, I've got this right pretty much centered on the valve and rocker, yet, look at the guide plate. Guide plate's way out here. So how's that gonna work? How's that going to work? If you center it from the center of where the push rod goes, from the guide plate, that doesn't look right to me. Well, that's because you need a specialty rock arm. So you need a special rock arm, whether it's a Jessel shaft rocker, or I believe Crower makes a rock arm for that. So you're going to need a special rock arm, which means more money. Okay? So that's, that's a big con for me. Okay? Now, let's look at the chamber. Actually, let's actually take the time to look at it. It is a cast cylinder head. But I've seen other cast cylinder heads like Pro Max where they actually take the time to hand blend. Now, check this out. Look at this ugly step on the intake on the short side. That's on the intake. Now, let me flip it over. It's actually worse. It actually looks worse right here. So they didn't even take the time to hand blend this. Okay, and that's probably why the flow numbers are pretty poor when you consider 
It's a big CC runner, and it's got a 202 valve. Now let's look at the exhaust. The exhaust is about the same thing. They could have hand blended that. Even though it's, the exhaust is going towards the outside, it's not going to make a huge difference, but it's still ugly. And, uh, you know, considering what these cylinder heads cost, you figure they would take the time to do that. Now, here's, here's another thing that's pretty interesting. Can we actually see this right here? It's got this nasty step right above the seat, you know, as it, it supposed to go towards the, uh, the chamber. So uh, that, that seems like a, a CNC programming issue. Maybe they don't all have this ugly step, but it, it just, it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't make sense how, how that, you know, gets allowed. Now, here's another thing. Look at that spark plug location. It's actually somewhat further away from the exhaust seat compared to, let's see, we've got an AFR 185 cylinder head right here. So let's actually look at that right there. Probably easier to see. It's much closer and it's aimed right at the exhaust or kind of towards the center where if we can get that angle, this one is not exactly aimed towards the center of the chamber. So that should affect burn. So it might not be as efficient as, you know, an AFR head or actually, you know what? I've got, I've got these trick flow high ports that I'm doing next. And these, these have about the same. So the angle in the spark plug is very similar to the AFR, as you can see. So looks like they haven't really updated that cylinder head. And last I checked, it's very similar to the old Canfield small block Ford heads, which are pretty popular. And with a lot of work, they will flow pretty decent. Uh, I actually had a set last year that were flown about 296 at about 650. So anyway, those are the, pro, uh, the uh, cons on the cylinder head. And the truth is, these are 1700 bucks. Not for the pair, 1700 bucks each. So $1,700 for, for 3400 bucks for a pair, I mean, you can get an AFR 205 with titanium retainers and hydraulic roller springs. So if you're gonna go with a big CC head, that's, that's what I would prefer. I think this cylinder head is overpriced for what it is. In fact, actually, let's take the time. Let me see here. I'll actually put this down. You can see gotta be careful there can we see the runners you should be able to see a, a huge size difference in the runners so let's look at what they actually flow now, actually before we get into that let's look at this look at the exhaust so on the afr 185 it's it's similar to stock okay but look at how much taller the exhaust is on this ford z304 cylinder head it's much taller which as i said before might require to you you know that you use specialty headers okay so those are cons now, I actually took the time to flow test these, as I said, and we're not in grade school, so I do make flow plates for the cylinder heads. I should take the time to make a flow plate, and you can see that fit pretty good, and I'm not using clay because it can change. So I'll actually take the time to use a uh, flow plate, and you can see I've got a little bit of clay here just to finish uh, any spots that you know, might be a little too big. Anyway, so let's get into the flow numbers. So we know that the, a, the Z304 is a 200cc runner. The AFR 185, obviously 185cc runner. Now at 100 lift, we've got 65 to 66, 200, 139 to 149, a little more CFM. 300, 198 to 200, so about even. 400, we've got 242, 249 at 500. We've got 255 on the Z304 and 282 
on the AFR 185. So it actually starts picking up steam right there. 550, 254, 291, 255 at 600, 296 on the AFR 185 head. 650, 257, 299 on the AFR 185, 700 lift, 262, 301 on the AFR 185, 750, 264, and they start the AFR starts backing up at 300 at 7, 750. Now, I know AFR rates is hit for I believe about 290 CFM, and it might have to do with the valve job. If you look at this one, it it's done quite beautifully. Normally, there's about a 10,000 step from the top of the seat from the 35 to the chamber. This one, I mean, I, I, I really can't feel anything. So I guess we got lucky on that. I've seen some that flow about 296, I believe, 298. But I guess this one's been the, the best so far. Now, let's look at the exhaust. And remember, the Z304 has a raised exhaust port, as I mentioned before. So technically, it should be much better. So we've got 59 at 100, 60 for the AFR. At 200, 111 versus 112. At 300, 154 to 158. At 400, 170 to 182. So the AFR is actually doing a little better. At 500, 181 to 189. 550, 184 to 189. At 600, 186 to 188. At 650, 187 to 188. And this is where the AFR uh, stalls. So it actually starts backing up. At uh, 700, it's 188, so the uh, Z304 keeps going. It actually kept going to one, actually kept going straight, so it stayed at 188. Uh, on the AFR, it started backing up to 185. Same thing at 750, backing up at uh, 185. But then again, as I mentioned, the AFR has a slightly smaller exhaust port, and it's not raised. Uh, you could take the time to, to alleviate that if you really want to, but Truth be told, I've done plenty of combinations. I'm talking 302s, 347s, even bigger engines, 408s with a 185 cylinder head, making well over 500 horsepower. It's, it's, you know, bang for your buck, the AFR Renegade is, is one of the best cylinder heads out there for the small block Ford. Now, I'm not talking about the Enforcer. Uh, something most people won't tell you is that the Enforcer is more of a budget head. It's for guys that want to say they have an AFR head but it's it's not a CNC ported head. It's not something that you know uh, AFR spent a ton of time to to engineer like they did with all of their Renegade heads. There's a lot of time, a lot of money involved, and that's why these heads will outperform the budget ass cast heads. So now, as I mentioned, the Z304 has a bigger intake port, so it's one three twenty wide, two point two hundred tall. The minimal cross-section area is 1.31 by the pushrod pinch. The AFR, much smaller. 1230 wide, 275 height in the height. Cross-section, 1.152. I mean, you're talking about 150 thou difference. Why? Because, as I mentioned before, Ford moved the... Obviously, they moved the guide plate, uh, sorry, the pushrod hole, and so they could have a much bigger port, and it, the uh, pushrod hole is not in the way, which is, which makes sense, but the problem is it doesn't flow any. Now, as I mentioned, and I'm sure you saw in the video, it could use uh, plenty of work on the short side in the bowl area, but for $3,400, that should have been done. That's just my opinion. Now, these are both flowed on a 4060 um, bore plate so now i did try the 4 125 and they were both about the same so no real big difference there so anyway i i, I hope this guy this this actually helps you guys because you know I, I don't use the ford racing z304 heads and this isn't a bash ford racing this isn't you know an ad for afr i mean truth be told i use afr because they work they have eight millimeter stems they use a good pack racing valve spring, good retainers. So uh, if I'm going to sell something to my customers, if I'm going to build an engine, it's got to be something that I'm going to put in my own vehicles, which actually I have. 
uh, either my 86 or my 66 Mustang had AFR heads. Now I'm still building something on that, but just goes to show that uh, I'm gonna put the same parts in my customer's engines that I put in my own. So I guess that's pretty much pretty much it for the video. Um, you know, I, actually, I, one more thing. I did take an AFR 220, so you can see that the Z304 head and the AFR 220 have about the same size port, except the AFR 220 is going to blow it out of the water, intake and exhaust flow-wise. Now... I know some guys are gonna say, oh, well, flow isn't everything great. Yeah, it's not, it's not everything. Flow numbers aren't everything. And truth be told, a lot of guys will actually blow out the throat, you know, they'll go 91% and they'll go crazy on that. They'll lay back the short turn and pick up flow. But truth be told, this just has to do with choosing a well-engineered cylinder head. And that's the reason why the Renegade head is so popular. As I mentioned earlier, the Enforcer head is popular because of the price. That's for guys that, you know, they want uh, an AFR head, but they want a cheap AFR head. Now, truth be told, the Enforcer will, will not compete with a Renegade. Not on the dyno, not at the track. So, you know, I, I hope this helps. Uh, as I mentioned before, I mean, this hobby is expensive, so why not buy something that you know will work out of the box? There's a lot of people that will tell you, oh, well, you know, just buy the enforcers or we'll sell, sell you the enforcers and uh, then we can port them, which makes no sense. Why would you buy something because it's a little cheaper? Then you've got to take it apart. You've got to port it. You've got to surface it. You've got to do a valve job. At that point, you might as well buy this better cylinder head. I mean, at that point, you might as well buy the uh, AFR 195, which is one of my favorite cylinder heads for smaller cubic inch engines, 400 and below, depending on the application. Uh, in fact, some of you might have seen that uh, 306 that we did, solid roller 306, that's 4030 bore, three inch stroke, turning 7,500 RPM plus, making 550 on pump gas with AFR 220s, but that's because in the future, might go to dark block. But anyway, I, I hope this helps. I hope this helps uh, some of you car guys make a decision on your small block Fords. So uh, I guess if you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments. Thank you.